Put your name on that, mister. Fine-looking horse you got there. Looks like he's been on the trail a long time, though. Four bits a day for your horse in the corral, for a dollar in a stall. Of course, if you're planning on staying, you can have a rate. Special. What in the corral? Take him out to the corral, People coming to town for the first time always ask me what's a hangman doing on the front of a livery stable. Well, I tell I ain't asking. scraping the bristle off his hide. Didn't have much chance to begin with, that love being kind of evil. Who's going to notice a dress? <sighs> Days keep getting longer all the time. Tex, you got something in mind for tonight? Rod gut? What else? Rod gut and something in skirts. figure how many meals you served me, I come up with one answer. What's that, Mr. Mayor? Too many. <laughs> Your ma's got a better way of earning a living. That's her business. I'd rather wait on table. <laughs> Sally, I consider that a waste of natural resources. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Maynard? <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> Are you con Maynard? Could be. I never felt that picture done me justice. It looks a little peaked. You've been here most a week now. 
Before that, you were in Chugwater and a couple, three days in Spruce. Is that so? You must be well acquainted with some personal friends of mine, Sonny. You killed three men in those places. Any of the departed your kin? That's a warrant for your arrest. Tell me more. I'm serving that warrant on you, Maynard. All by yourself? I'm a deputy United States Marshal. Well, ain't that a fancy title for a fellow like you? Where are you taking me? St. Louis. St. Louis, huh? You know, Sonny, you need some good advice, and I'm going to give it to you. Pick up that warrant and head right back to St. Louis. Not without you, I ain't. I ain't partial to St. Louis, especially now. Maynard, you're worth $200 to me, dead or alive. Found a hunter. You can back to St. Louis with me and hang. You'll go for your gun now. Maybe I'm the one who needs some advice. You just go for your gun. That's a chance you wouldn't get with a hangman. <laughs> Follow you now, big man. Khan was a friend of mine. You didn't want to take him in alive. You forced him to draw. He drew first. You saw it. You better have an inquest pretty quick. Weather like this, he won't keep. Somebody better get the sheriff. Sam, for 20 years, mister, this sink's got to be moved closer to the chair. Only thing is, I'm liable to be dead before then. Ever think of moving the chair closer to the sink? Sure. I think of lots of things, like burning the shop down, like hanging the only barber doctor undertaker in Mound City from the highest branch of the tallest tree. Looks like they won't get around to that either. The thing that would surprise you is the little doctor and I get to do. Plenty of barbering, plenty of undertaking. Shooting over the hotel not more than an hour ago. My services will be required. Undertaking services? Pretty quick, too, the whole neat quest tonight. Well, is something sweet smelling in the face, mister? No. Never did see such a rush to get a fellow underground. Maybe he wasn't liked. Uh, there you're wrong. I talked to her, Miss Trump. Why? Always spend his money free. Harder and squeeze for the women, jerk for the men. Real popular. What about the men he killed? Killed none here. Staying in town? Till after the inquest. And I get the job shaved in two. Pays double. You've heard all the other witnesses to the shooting, Miss Sally. You anything to add to their testimony? Would you mind speaking up, miss? I didn't see anything different from what the others saw. But you were closer to the two men than any of the others. Is that correct? I didn't see or hear anything different. Let me step down, miss. On the basis of the testimony here given, and acting as coroner appointed by the sheriff of Mound City, it is my finding that the deceased met his death at the hands of United States Deputy Marshal Welsh. It is also my finding that the deceased refused to accept a warrant served on him, and therefore the action of the marshal was legal and justified. I'll need a signed statement of your findings. Easiest thing in the world, Marshal. Wallen always makes it look real legal, like he was a real judge. He's judge enough for the job he's doing. You 
Do I have to tell you what to do with that paper? What's wrong with it, Marshal? Well, it just doesn't happen to mention that the man I killed was Con Maynard. Who's Con Maynard? Con Maynard's the man lying right there. Never heard his name. Well, that ain't easy to believe. Well, you just work on it. What difference does it make what his name was? The authorities in St. Louis don't like to take just the marshal's word for it. A man is dead. That ought to satisfy the proper authorities. It doesn't satisfy them that the man I killed was Con Maynard. Well, who is that important to? That's important to me. You didn't have to kill him. You could have turned him over to Sheriff Hinkle. He wasn't wanted in this county. The sheriff's got no authority to arrest men wanted in other counties. Is that right, Sheriff? That's what puts bounty hunters into business, ain't it? You're out of order, Mr. Sloan. The identity of the deceased has not exactly been established, Marshal. It would appear that you're not going to get your money in this instance, except maybe your mileage fee. He stayed at your hotel. That's right, Marshal. If you want to rope down, I'm sure the judge will be glad to oblige. Miss? Miss, I'm speaking to you. You know who the dead man was. I didn't know his name. He ate regular in the dining room. I saw you speaking to him. I speak to all the customers. I didn't know his name. Well, now, that's mighty funny. Nobody here seems to know the dead man's name. Stands the reason a wanted man isn't going around telling people who he was. Especially if he knew he was worth all of $200 to a bounty hunter. Doc, don't you nail that coffin lid down too quick. Stranger wants to get his picture took. <laughs> he ought to get two for the price of one. Anybody here? I ain't really open for business, mister. I was just developing some plates. Well, I got a job for you. I'll pay you double. I'm open for business. Take your equipment and let's go. Take your picture right here. It's not my picture I want painted. I'll get my plates. I'll develop it quick as you can. Well, this ought to satisfy the authorities in St. Louis. They weren't firing at us. Could it be fixed? No. Is that the only camera you got? Yeah. How long would it take to get another one? The nearest place is Wichita. Two weeks. Two weeks? Oh, that corpse wouldn't be socially presentable by that time.
If some heart you should steal Don't think that it's just a game A plaything to you If you pretend it love You'll always lose Still you might even win But if you try to cheat a heart That's when your heartaches begin So if you're pretending not It's better to part Don't make believe in case you're interested, somebody just shot up the photo laboratory. You don't mean it. I'll need an affidavit. I'd like to help you. Would you? I was being polite. The man you shot over at the hotel wasn't wanted in Mars City. I didn't have no official interest in him. You'd know who he was. Put on you an affidavit saying you killed a man over the hotel who was maybe Con Maynard. And who maybe wasn't. Thanks a lot. Marshal, you got any further business in Mount City? And you're leaving town tonight? Sheriff, I earned $200. I intend to collect it. Who's burying Con Maynard? Who's burying the man you killed? Oh, I guess. What name are they going to put on the grave? No name at all, most likely. Maybe it's just a dollar sign. His many friends might not like that. Folks don't like something else a lot more. Bounty hunters. Stranger coming into their town, shooting down somebody they know and like for a price. Don't go down easy. See what I mean? I'm a federal peace officer. I'm a peace officer, too. Even I don't like it. Well, what are you going to learn how to add? Got some of the figures wrong? You didn't get any of them right. I'd like a room. Well, I ain't sure we got one. What's it gonna take to make you sure? I'll take care of the marshal, Will. What's the matter with him? Afraid of the hotel's reputation? Will thinks that everything you do counts. And you're old enough to think that nothing counts. I'm old enough not to worry who I rent a room in my hotel to. It's all set for breakfast, Mr. Creevy. Good night, Sally. Good night. Come on, Will. Let's see if we can get this hotel back on a paying basis. I don't want you in my room. Me or anybody else, the way it looks. You came here to tell me that? Why, this room looks like it don't want even you. Now you know the kind of place I live in, you can go. Well, that wasn't what I was interested in. I'm not signing papers about anything. Is that clear? Does that make you feel real important, standing up to the bounty marshal the way you are? You are faster than him. Forcing him to draw. Quite a hero, I'd say. Well, I ain't aiming to be a hero. Besides, I didn't know that I was faster until we drew. You know, someday in a town like this, bigger or smaller, I won't be faster. He didn't have a chance. 
Well, he had killed three men before their time. They didn't have a chance. Now, suppose you had loved one of those men that he killed. What would you do with your love when Con Maynard was through with him? Married him or held him in your arms? You really ought to do something about your hands. A woman's hands are supposed to be soft. What would you know about women? And the way you dress. This room that you live in. Seems like you're afraid. Afraid of being alive. Are you afraid of men, miss? Is it any worse than being filled with hate the way you are? No, maybe not. Same thing. Hating people or being afraid of them, either way is the way of wanting them dead. Who is your mother? I heard Con Maynard talking about her. Who is she? That's real easy to find out. All you have to do is buy a drink at the Crystal Palace. Who's your father? What's all that got to do with your two hundred dollars? Nothing. Nothing at all. over at the barber shop. Doc will fix him up real pretty. I wish you'd talk about something else soon. Why? Trying to fool yourself nobody dies? Yeah, that pint-sized marshal is going to have a lot of trouble collecting from Maynard. The, um, the hotel clerk tells me he's been trying to get a statement from your daughter. Fine chance man's got to get anything from Sally. She sure don't take after her mom. Sounds like it's time you learn manners, Patton. Let him be. He's stupid, but he's awfully pretty. For as long as he lasts. Watch this, Mr. Sloan. <coughs> I figure I'm gonna last a long time. What do you think, Mr. Sloan? Well, I drink too much whiskey anyway. Did you ever see a faster draw? On the other hand, you didn't have to worry about that glass drawing on you. That kind of worry can slow a man's draw sometimes. Somebody else's, not mine. You knew Khan pretty good. If you say so. You liked him? Enough. The summer we had the drought three years ago. I had to butcher most of my cattle. It would have finished me for good if Con Maynard hadn't come along just then with a herd and let me have it. Not a dollar changed hands because I didn't have a dollar. What I know of Con probably wasn't his herd anyway. And I suppose he did get him illegal. All I know is he could have got cash in hand for him at Dodge. Instead of waiting two years till I could pay for him. You paid him. Yeah, but he never pressed me. Con Maynard was mighty good to me. Lots of others around here. And Marshall's pretty fast. Faster than me? I don't know. I might ask you to find out. Les is a human being. He's not a gun for you to pick up and use. Maybe he ain't, Jill. But I might have to use him anyway. Dile que no cante, que espera que yo me muera. 
madre, que íbamos a llegar, hombre. ¡Ay! ¡Qué bonito barrio pinto! ¡Esos que estoy mirando! ¡Cándale, que no falte que espera que yo me muera! ¡Pasarillo barranqueño! ¡Pasarillo! pasará ya mi burro, vamos a ver Amor, this is not for the bright morning, it is for the dark hours of the night Killings for the dark hours And the lid down ain't nothing more than carpentry Who cares what hours a carpenter keeps You know señor, I think you're correct Gracias, my Latin amigo. You know, Corky, I just happened to think. They ain't hanged a Mexican around here in the longest time. Ain't many of them around anymore, Tex. That shows you how smart they are. You know something? Hmm? A fella like Con Maynard. He deserves to have his kin around him when he's buried. Hmm. Especially kin as close as his brother. You know, somebody ought to ride out to Charlie Maynard's ranch and convey the sad news. Might lead to trouble. Charlie possessing such a hot temper. Yeah, it might. Corky, you think we ought to perform this Christian duty? Why, well, we owe it to Khan's memory. Ah. Food is a beautiful thing. And to have it served by a beautiful girl, as the poet has said, is paradise and now. <laughs> Although it's true the poet mentions a loaf of bread instead of ham and eggs. Sally, stood up to the marshal real good. Poor child. What is it the good book says about the sins of the father being visited on the generations after him? Although in her case, it would be the sins of the mother, wouldn't it? Oh, I sincerely beg your pardon, Mr. Patton. Nothing personal. You don't know what you're talking about. Morning, Marshal. Morning. Sleep well? You still serving breakfast? Still being served. Pick any table you like. Of all the tables, why pick this one? What's the matter with it? It's the one where Tom Mina used to sit. Yes. Speaking of sin, I hope neither of you gentlemen will forget to appear at the dance tonight. What dance? The Johnson Hall. Raise funds for a schoolhouse. <laughs> Who needs a schoolhouse? That, in legal terms, might be considered a leading question, Mr. Patton. How long have you been interested in dancing, Judge? I'm in charge of the ticket sale. Oh. Well, in that case, I guess there's no real danger of the kids getting to be students too quick. Were I a resentful type of man, I might object to that remark. You're at liberty, too. Yes, sir. Oh, give me anything, anything at all. something uh, for a lady. Oh, maybe it's something for her to wear, eh? Uh, a, a hat. No? Um, a, a dress? No? 
Maybe it's something that nobody else should see but you, eh, Senor? Uh, something for up here? No, uh, for... Um... Oh, no, no, no. No? It's something... It's not anything to wear. Oh, too bad. Uh, um, maybe you would like the lady to smell good? No. No? Let's see. It's something for her hands. Her hands? Oh. See, her hands are all, they're all rough. Oh. I got a cream someplace. It's made from the tallow of a sheep. You don't look like the lover of a, a woman who milks cows. She doesn't milk cows. And I am not her lover. Maybe not today, but tonight, who can tell, eh? <laughs> but with a present like this, mm, it's like a medicine. How much? Two beats. Not tonight, or tomorrow either. Why you say that, senor? Oh, you mean because you are not tall? You mean you, you think about this all the time? I am Mexican. And we Mexican, we are small people. In this country, we learn quick how it is a joke sometimes. Sometimes worse. My husband, Miguel, He's been dead five years now. He was smaller than you are, but in his arms, oh. You are thinking a silly old woman like me was lucky to have any man. I was thinking Mr. Bonaventura was very lucky. What do you want? I just want to see you for a minute. I fell asleep. Dining room's closed for the rest of the day. If you're worrying what this will look like, why don't you shut the door? Though people wouldn't believe anything wrong was happening here anyway. Well, why wouldn't they? I'm not my mother. I don't let men in my room. You let me in? I'm not afraid of you. Why not? Because you're like me. Lonely. And trying to hide your loneliness behind a gun. The way I do behind an apron. You can't fool me like you do the others. They used to seem like giants to me when I was a little girl. Loud, laughing men that hung around my mother, bought her drinks, joked with her, touched her. Do I have to tell you more? No. You just told me what I am. But don't you see, if you weren't different, I couldn't have let you in my room. Oh. supposed to be good for your hands. $200. That's what he's going to get for killing your brother. $200. I'll go get my gun. You ain't no gunman, Charles. 
He ain't getting the bounty money. Count of nobody's identifying your brother. That's why the marshal's still in town. He's waiting till somebody gets around. I'm riding back with you. Charles, Con's being your brother didn't make you and him the same thing. He was a man with restless feet, with grabbing hands. He was my brother. He was a killer and hunted. I won't have you starting down the same trail. The burying's tomorrow morning up on Boot Hill, Mr. Maynard. Pretty near everybody in town's gonna be there. Nailed down pretty quick, didn't she? Two weeks, it wouldn't be worth taking that picture of her. By then, his own killer wouldn't know him. Nailed it down, you had a chance to look at him. Sure. Then you know who he is. I don't even know who his brother is. Brother? What I said. Hey, Doc, maybe you're... What I know is he owns a ranch a ways out of town. What I hear... Brother got the sad news today. He'll be in Mound City in time for the funeral tomorrow morning. Are you sure he'll be in for the funeral? Dead certain. He's one of the proud ones. Nothing to be proud about in an outlaw. All the more reason. He ain't gonna stand for his brother being rushed nameless into the ground. How'd you ever get that lint, Doc? I was standing around watching a pair of gunmen acting brave. They drew one of the bullets ricocheted, bust for kneecap. Haven't ridden a horse in 20 years. That answer your question? Yeah. Doc, what you want to tell that marshal about Maynard's brother for? Now, Joe, I didn't mention no names, did I? You gotta be careful about squirming around like this. I'm liable to cut your nose off. Barber did that to a fellow once. Stuck his back arm, he got on upside down. Every time the fellow sneezed, he blew his hat off. When it rained, he drowned. You gotta be careful. Is what you do with it? Come up here like this and sit all alone? I've been alone all my life. Only most of the time, people are around. So on my day off, I go right away from them. On my day off, I get to be alone without them. I like that better. I didn't thank you for the hand cream. I used it. Feels good. Doesn't smell awful, but uh... there was something I said made you mad. Oh, I don't remember. Anyhow, I'm not mad anymore. I'm glad. You know, Sally, that people like us, well, it don't happen too often, but uh, we can't afford to. Can't afford what? I can't afford to be so touchy, quick to take offense. Otherwise, we'd be alone all our lives. Sally? Yes? They're having a dance in town tonight. Uh, would you let me take you to it?
Please, Luke. considered opinion, this dance is a complete and sheer triumph. Jolly, joyous, and profitable. For who? Let's face it, Mr. Sloan. Who needs scholars out here? The dancing tonight and the burying tomorrow morning. A slice of life, my friend. Sufficient under the day is the evil. Is that marshal checked out of town yet? Not yet. I suppose we may hope for the best, hmm? Well, you can stop hoping. The best ain't happening. bought tickets for our splendid soiree. I must have figured there was a good investment. You won't make trouble, I sincerely trust. He won't. You may possibly put an end to my not-too-savory career, but I must inform you... Of what? The fact that you're not welcome here. The second girl he ever asked to a dance. She laughed at me. I'm not laughing at you. I know that. Sally, I've made a big mistake getting you mixed up into this. Someone like you that can be hurt, can cry. There wasn't anything I could do about it. You can't dry a girl's tears with a gun. You can always kiss her. You aren't going to do anything. Kill the bottle, you'll get your percentage. What are you complaining about? He ain't a gentleman cowboy. He didn't even take off his hat. Oh, well, uh, it's the boots that make me mad. Still in town. 
I'm real happy about that. Real stupid is what you are. Charles Maynard's coming into town for the burying. So fool proud, he'll identify the brother for the marshal. Identify his brother and kill the marshal. Try to kill the marshal. Maybe I'm being stupid, though. I took Sally Danson tonight. Why should that mean anything? Well, by now, he's likely talking her into signing a statement that'll help him collect his blood money. How about me going over after him? No one's asking you to draw on the marshal. That depends on how you feel about throwing down on him. I feel fine about it. Just fine. You don't have to bother going after him. Marshal's saving everybody a lot of trouble. I like him coming to me. I think he's coming to see Bill. Trying out the whole family, you might say. Les, I don't want any shooting in here. This is Crane? I'm Jill Crane. There's something I want to talk to you about. I don't need an audience. You boys stay here. Marshall. Took Sally to that dance tonight. She went home crying. The girl's tears dry pretty quick. How quick does blood stop flowing from a wound? You know about that better than me. Besides, when you're young, you always believe that things are going to change for the better. Well, what do you believe? Change, all right. Mostly for the worse. Little man's getting real conversational with Jill. Trying to sweet talk her, maybe. That ain't the way I get anything out of Jill. Well, I doubt you and the marshal got the same thing in mind. Just why did you come in here? I wanted to meet Sally's mother. Well, you met her. Mrs. Crane, there's something I want to ask you. Like uh, how you can get a paper signed so he can collect your bounty? No. Then what is it? It's about Sally. Why'd you come to me? Because in this whole world, there's nobody else cares what happens to her except the two of us sitting at this table. You're a smart man, Marshal. I've always been afraid of smart men. Yes, you're right. I do care what happens to Sally. I care a lot. That don't help her or me. For five years, she's crossed the street whenever she saw me coming. Well, what did you expect her to do? What do you expect me to do? Well, you could have gotten out of all the, this in here. You could have stopped killing. And become what? The only thing I've ever been good at is handling a gun. Any place I ever rolled from the Dakotas to the Mexican border, men have been shooting and killing. They kill for love, for hate, and for money. Now, I never cared enough about anybody to hate them. And I've never been close enough to love them. You see, I kill for money. It's easy to be wrong about a man, especially when he makes his living by a gun. But you didn't kill for money. You had to prove something or hide something. I've been wrong about you. I didn't come in here to talk about me. No. About that question you wanted to ask me, I don't know how to answer it. Except maybe uh, give you my blessings. What good would that do me? No good. No good at all. Marshal, get up. Why? I wouldn't want to shoot a man who was sitting down. That'd be a hanging offense. Nobody killing you would hang in this town. Les! This ain't got a thing to do with you, Jill. But him and Sally! What about him and Sally? Don't matter. She can always go put posies on his grave. Well, no, I ain't dead yet. That's what's making me sick to my stomach. Get up, Mr. Marshall. Wouldn't shooting me in the back from a dark alley be safer? You're doing a lot of talking, ain't you? You and me throwing down on each other. 
That's almost funny. But with Jill and me the way we are, and you taking her daughter up in the hills. Now who's doing the talking? I'm waiting for you, tall man. Leslie's not what you think. <laughs> Why didn't you kill him? There wasn't a bounty on you. I got something for you. Better than the medicine for the hands. Something for who? For the senorita you took to the dance. Oh, she was just somebody that I happened to. You think I never knew a man? It cannot be hidden what is between you and the senorita. Well, what's in it? A nightgown. Made of the finest silk. With the most beautiful lace came from Spain many years ago. How much? I am not always a storekeeper, senor. Pray to accept it as a gift. Thank you very much, Mrs. Bonaventure. How's Patton? He's fine, fine. Kind of damaged a bit, but fine. You ain't finished talking. One of the bullets severed a tendon in his wrist. After the wounds heal, he ought to be just as good a gunslinger as I am a horseman. This is getting awfully restless. Oh, the drug I gave him hasn't taken effect yet. That marshal's got to be killed. That's all right. All you have to do is find the right man for the job. He's got to be killed tonight. Don't you think you better take a good look at him? We arrest better on Sloan here has made arrangements for the Marshal's killing. Look, if, if you nursing any idea I'm going up against him alone. No one's going up against him alone. I'm not. Not him or any other man. Outside of killing each other, there's only one thing they're good for. Not much good at that either. Sally? I don't like ganging up on a man. Well, now, Mr. Brent, were you aiming to take him on all by yourself? The marshal's a federal peace officer, and the man he kills an outlaw. Are we trying to make mounds safe for outlaws? You must be awful scared of him. You are. But not a you. You wouldn't be thinking of warning him now, would you, Mr. Brent? Wouldn't do him a bit of good if I did, or you either. All I want's a drink. This is a saloon, ain't it? Let the man get his drink. Even, Sheriff. Where's the marshal? Well, how many bounty hunters you got stopping here? Upstairs in his room, and I wouldn't call him a bounty hunter to his face. There's a mob on its way over here right now, figuring on doing a whole lot worse than that. Sally! 
You're sticking with him? I am? Then get him out of here, honey. Oh, Mama. Please help me. He won't listen. If he's what you want, make him listen. Look, take him to my house. They won't be looking for him there. Inside. We're gonna get it. Charles, you said we was coming to town only for Khan's funeral. Maybe you'll turn out to be a double funeral. If you kill the marshal, you know what else will be buried up on Boot Hill tomorrow morning? All the peace and decency of our whole lives. Two of you men stay out here. Rooms the marshal in. You're asking questions with a gun in your hand, Sloan. I'll apologize for that some other time. Right now, what's his room? You ain't gonna use my hotel for a slaughterhouse. Oh, we don't have to bother, Mr. Creevy. Will's gonna tell us. Ain't you, oh, Will? I'm not running. There's a dozen men down there. What are you trying to prove? How brave you are before you die? I'm not interested in being brave. You gonna tell us, Will? Room seven. Ain't nobody going upstairs. I think you're forgetting who put you in office. And I think you're forgetting what you put me in office for. <laughs> Doing's more interesting than the girls' room. Come on. BG, check the balcony. Come on with me. Hey. Look at this, Tex. What floor? There ain't no one in it. Come on. He's got to be out here somewhere. somehow. Did you see him maybe coming down those stairs? No. You better take your wife inside. Book rooms for yourselves. As far as the marshals go is why you can't have got far. We'll keep looking. If they find us... There's no reason why they should. If something happens, I want you to tell me at least once. I'll tell you what. That you love me. I do, Sally. I love you more than anything. You keep on showing them. Les! Get Doc Weber quick. I don't think this is exactly what you had in mind. But you accomplished something tonight. Hollered enough. We didn't want no harm coming to Jill. That ought to help her. 
Get him out of here before he comes to. Got a chance? Couple of hours, more or less. Don't make much difference. He wasn't going nowhere. Woman like her gets old sudden, quick. Once she does. It's my fault she's dying. Don't be so exclusive, son. Died because of me, too. Twenty years ago, when Sully's pa took off, I could have asked Jill to marry me. But I was too proud. Too proud of being a cripple. You ought to understand that. It was nice of you to come by and visit. Oh, Mama. I ain't been any good to you since the day I was born. You were someone I could love without fear of losing. But I lost you a long time ago, didn't I? Oh, Mama. Do you think that you could keep it from Lester? That he was the one? Gonna be all right, huh? Then why am I so afraid? friends he's got till he dies. Sometimes he makes more friends by dying than by anything else he ever done. Beautiful day for Khan's funeral. Too bad he ain't alive to appreciate it. Sally? Sally? I've got to tell you why I've become a bounty hunter. You don't have to, look. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You know, being short, nobody ever takes me seriously. When I was a kid, it became kind of a joke. I didn't like that. 
So I got out and became a bounty hunter. I went to new places, met new people. And wherever I went, the laughing went with me. That I'd killed and kept going. Now I've got to get up to where the burying come in. I thought after you told me you loved me. I thought after me, after what happened, it'd make a change. I'll sign that paper, Luke. You can take it back to St. Louis and get your two hundred dollars. Anything I get will be up at Boot Hill. Don't you know yet that no matter how many men you kill, it ain't gonna make you an inch taller? But you're going anyway. I hope they don't kill you. But if they do, I don't have no more tears. resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Mr. Maynard, I'm the man who killed your brother. Kill him. He needs to be killed. Yeah, I got on you. He didn't use it. Go, Facing your gun. I had to let Maynard's brother get at me. I owed it to him. Owed it to myself, maybe. That's a funny thing. So much depends on who he owes them to. Nine rode into town a couple of days ago with a warrant in his pocket, wouldn't know what you're talking about. Oh, he had a known. But he wouldn't have accepted it. Oh. Doc, I have to belong to some place. I have to become a part of someone. What chance would I have had of staying in mound if I hadn't thrown my gun away? What chance would I have of walking down a friendly street? Well, I'll try to get up. Doc, I got no regrets for killing Maynard, but I sure wish I wasn't the one that done it. There's a boot hill in every town where the dead are hidden in the ground and forgotten. There's a boot hill in every man's soul, too, Mr. Welk. You mean that the dead past bury its dead, huh? It will anyway.
Sally? Luke. I lost my gun somehow on the way to Boot Hill. See the other fellow. Not a mark on him. 